What's up guys, Graham here. If you left a comment in the comment section of the last weekend video, then you are entered into the giveaway of two different things. We're giving away a Rex and we're giving away a Typhoon edition of the new expansion. And the winners are, BAM! Right there. Congratulations. We will be sending your prizes to you just shortly. We had a couple of donations this week that will spur giveaways. So the first donation that we had is from Scott and he donated $10. So that's going to trigger a Rex giveaway. And if you're one of the people that have used my referral link in the description below my videos to create your Rift account, then if you're one of the winners, then you will win 10 times that amount of Rex. Then we had another donation from Patrick which was a hundred dollars what that is insane man thank you so much and in his message he says i really appreciate your help i would love to see you do a video on optimizing your stats especially cleric inquisitor and warrior thanks for everything great channel Thank you so much, man. You do not know how important that is that you donated that much money. I cannot believe it. Thank you. You didn't leave your character name, though, so I can add you to my friends list, and then I can message you anytime I do Warfront so you can join up with me and own up some people on the Warfront. So, Patrick, if you end up watching this, make sure you send me your character name, man. And in appreciation for the large donation, I, of course, will do a giveaway for a couple of 30-day patron passes. So that's a Rex giveaway and two 30-day patron passes that's up for grabs here. If you'd like to be entered into this giveaway, then all you have to do is leave your character name and server in the comment section below this video. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and hit that like button. The winners will be announced in the next weekend video. Good luck, everyone. Sorry for the weekend video being a day or two late, I got caught up playing a little bit of Rift. Now whenever I logged on over the weekend, I thought, what am I going to do? And for some reason in my mind, I decided to go ahead and level up some crafting skills. Now I'd only done crafting one time before on my character and I leveled up armor smithing all the way up to 450 skill and none of the other ones I even bothered with until today. So I thought since I'm spending all of my time on the crafting stuff, I might as well give you guys the knowledge that I've learned from doing it. So welcome to the Ultimate Crafting Guide. Now to start out, let's go ahead and go over each of the crafting professions and let you guys know exactly what they do and what all is available for you to get. Now to start off with, I have to be upfront in that you can only have three crafting professions at any given time on your character unless you go ahead and spend some credits in order to get the unlocks for your crafting professions. If you spend some credits, you can unlock each of the crafting professions and I believe there's 10 of them right now, so that would be a lot of skills to work on at once. The gathering professions that are available are butchering, foraging, and mining. And butchering is basically whenever you kill a creature, you are able to click on the body and skin it. And it, of course, will give you the leather or meats that come from that particular animal. Foraging is used to gather herbs and vegetables off of the ground so that you can use them in the other professions. And of course, mining is the ability to harvest ores from rocks that you find throughout the lands. And it is primarily used in armor smithing and weapon smithing. The primary crafting professions are apothecary, which is used to make flask, potions, uh, tonics, and vials that will heal you up, restore your mana, or give you lots of stats. Armor smithing is the ability to make plate armor, shields, augments, enhancements, and even some dimension items. Artificers create jewelry such as rings, necklaces, earrings, and a lot of the additional slots that everybody needs on their character. Dreamweaving is primarily a dimension item creation profession, but is also used to create dream orbs, which add additional stats to your items on your character. Outfitters create cloth and leather items, mainly used by casters. Rune crafting is, of course, the creation of runes, which are used to augment your weapons and gear. Weapon smithing is pretty much to the point as well, where you create melee and ranged weapons. 
And finally, we have the additional professions, which anybody can pick them up, and that is fishing and survival. And fishing, of course, is the ability to harvest fish out of the waters, and survival is the ability to create food, which will give you temporary increases to your stats. Now the way to get started into your crafting career is to go to one of the profession trainers and they are mainly located in Tempest Bay and also in Dromheim in the Margle Palace. Once you talk to the profession trainer then you go ahead and pick up the skill and it'll take up one of your profession slots and then you can begin crafting things from there. In order to do any crafting at all you usually have to be close to a base of operation and that is things such as with weapon smithing and arbor smithing you have to be close to a forge so naturally you have to be in the crafting areas in order to do the profession you're wanting to do the second step is you have to have the recipes in order to make the items in order to level up your crafting skills now most of the recipes are sold from the profession trainer so check there first the next step is actually getting the ingredients that you need now a lot of people will try to save money and go out into the open world and start harvesting such as with their foraging ability their mining ability and of course the butchering ability but if you're somebody that doesn't have the time to go out and try to harvest all of the ingredients that you need you can of course go to the auction house and there's a very easy way of doing things just pop up your crafting menu go ahead and right click on the ingredient that you need and it'll autofill it into your auction house now mind you if you go through the auction house to buy most of your ingredients it's going to run a pretty high tab but it isn't as bad as most people make it out to be i maxed out five different professions and i think it took me less than 2000 platinum in order to do it with me buying almost all the ingredients off the auction house the best way to level up your crafting professions is to gather all the materials that you're going to need beforehand whether you're doing it by the auction house or going out and gathering in the open world and that way you can dedicate as much time as you need to in the crafting area and don't have to keep running away in order to go find the things that you need if you're wondering how much of each item you're going to need in order to level up a particular crafting profession, I will have a link in the description below that you can click on and look and it will have a complete layout of all the ingredients that you're going to need to go from level 1 to 450 skill in your profession. It will also have each individual item that you're going to need to make at certain skill points and that way it'll be very easy for you to go from one thing to the next and know exactly the cheapest route in order to level up. A lot of times you have to deviate from what the guide actually says because a lot of times the particular ingredient that you need isn't going to be on the auction house or it's just way too expensive for you to be able to afford. Whenever those situations come up just keep in mind that you always want to craft items that the name is orange in difficulty. That will mean that you will get a guaranteed skill gain whenever you make that item. Whenever the name of an item turns yellow, that means that you're most likely going to get a skill point as well, but there are times that you will make the item and it won't give you anything at all. Whenever it turns green in color, that means that it's very rarely going to give you a skill point, and if you just need that last little bit in order to get to the next skill level, then you can go ahead and make up the green items if you've got plenty of resources for it but don't count on it as a primary way of leveling up your crafting profession while you're leveling up it's usually given that every 10 skill points that you get you will have new recipes that you can get from your crafting profession trainer so if you go from 50 skill to 60 the moment that you hit 60 skill go ahead and talk to the profession trainer and learn the new recipes because there might be a new recipe that he gives you that will be easier for you to make, cheaper on resources, and also be orange and colored to guarantee a skill point gain. Whenever I was working on my crafting professions, I made sure to have three points into the guild perk called Journeyman, which increases your odds of getting an extra skill point whenever working on your professions. I also had a transcendent skill sphere running at all times, which would increase my skill gains by 160%. You can get the transcendent skill spheres from the Rift store, which you would have to buy with credits, or I believe the 
players can list them on the auction house as well so check there and you might get lucky now once you've maxed out your chosen profession it usually becomes pretty easy at that point because for each profession there's usually only a few different ingredients that are used at max level in order to make most of the things that you would want to make for me i've maxed out pretty much every single skill so i have a particular bag set aside with those chosen ingredients that are always used in those professions and I stocked up on them so I never have to really worry about them that much. And that brings us to the currencies that are needed in order to buy a lot of the recipes that you're going to need with your crafting professions. These are artisan marks, master craftsman's marks, and grandmaster craftsman's marks. These are mainly gained from doing the daily quest of a particular profession and also the weekly that they give with the Nightmare Tide. The daily quests are very easy. All you have to do is go up and talk to the NPC in the crafting area and it'll ask you to craft an item or maybe even a couple of items but that particular item always will use the ingredients that are used on that profession's in-game item so you should have a good supply of that ingredient and then you can just turn around and go back to the npc and turn it in once you've turned it in it will give you the option of selecting which kind of marks you would like would you like the artisan marks the master marks or the grand master marks Try to be smart on which marks you end up choosing because a lot of the in-game recipes require all three of the marks so you have to figure out how much of each one you need in order to get the next recipe. And then we have the big weekly quests that you can get for crafting. Now with the daily quests you can actually get one of the daily quests for each one of your professions but with the weekly you can only do it for one profession each week. So the weekly can only be done once not once for every single profession. Now whenever you do the weekly crafting quest, it's going to be a very expensive quest as in the ingredients in order to make the items it's going to ask you to make are probably going to be quite a few platinum. Despite the high cost, the rewards are absolutely insane and at the time of this video, one of the rewards that you can choose is 650 of the latest currency. So yeah, you get 650 marks in order to spend on the newest items that are in the game. The latest forum post, crafters are the top geared people in the game, nerf crafters. A couple more tips in order to end off this guide here is that one, make sure that you buy the biggest bags you can on your character because you're going to need all the room for all the crafting ingredients that you're going to have. Number two is always break down the items that you make because that will a lot of times be returned in resources that you're going to need in order to make the next items. So whenever you're looking into your general skills on your character, make sure that you look for all the salvage skills that are there in order to break down all the armor, weapons, or anything else that you might pick up or craft. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And also, if you are new to Rift, make sure you use my referral link in the description below this video because it'll give you lots of good items for starting your account, which will be very helpful. Trust me. As usual, guys, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.